Hello and welcome to the third part of the PowerShell GUI mini-series where I show you how you can create a graphical user interface with a PowerShell script using WPF or WinForms. In previous videos I showed you how you can use WPF GUI in PowerShell. I showed you this WPF GUI example by the name Coin Browser, which displays the current information about the top 100 crypto coins. We also went through the PowerShell script behind and explained line by line what the script is doing. So if you're interested how to create a WPF grid like this one in PowerShell, the video link is up there or down in the description. In this video we will focus on WinForms and we will rewrite this WPF GUI into WinForms and we will use it in PowerShell. You can find the PowerShell scripts and all the necessary links down in the description. Down there are also all the timestamps so you can skip any part of this video. Before we start, if you like that kind of content and want to see more of it, I have a lot of free dev related videos on my channel and there is more to come, so please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. As said, we will recreate this WPF GUI in WinForms and we will also reuse the script that we used in the previous example, so we will need to adapt the script a bit. Of course I already did that and I will show you the WinForms related changes that I did inside the script here. So let's close this one. There are two significant changes that I did inside the script. The first is the GUI itself. In WPF you read the GUI from XAML file. And in case of WinForms, you build the whole GUI inside the script itself. So this whole part here is just building the GUI till here. And how this is done, we instantiate all the GUI controls like this form here. This is the main form. And we set properties on those controls. So for instance, if we want an image column inside the grid, we need to instantiate it first. The column name should be called image, the header text should be emg, the width should be 40, and so on. So all of these controls like column name, rank, price, market cap, and the grid itself, we need to instantiate inside the script. And then we also have a few buttons like the button previous, the button next, button about, and at the end, we put everything on top of this form that we also instantiated previously. So as you can see, when you use WinForms, you will need to code the whole GUI yourself. But of course, there are tools that can help you with this, for instance, Visual Studio, and we will see how this works in a moment. The second significant change that I did inside the script is the part where we fill the data source of the grid, which is at the beginning in the function refresh view. In here, I built the grid data source out of this coin objects that I defined up here and which contains the properties that will be shown as columns in the grid. And I built the data source here by myself because the grid just expects to have all the images resolved and downloaded. Just as a reminder, we get the coin information from the CoinGecko API and all those images are just simple links to an image file and the Windows Forms grid that I'm using can't handle URLs and that's why I need to download all the images first, in memory of course. Now the rest of the script, if you scroll down, it's just setting the click events for the previous button, the next button, the about button. And then down here, this is the interesting event. On the grid itself, we have a key down event. And the same way as we do it in the previous video, we can also reset the grid by pressing escape. And we can also reload the whole GUI by pressing F12. How does this work? It will trigger a reset. It will close the dialog. And then down here, this loop will bring us back to the beginning, to this part right here. And this will then rebuild the form and show the new form. We will see this hot reload feature in action. All right, let's start the script. We are inside PowerShell IIC, so here we can also debug the script. So just press play. And here it is, Coin Browser. This is the WinForms grid. Now, if this is the first time that you are running the script or any script in PowerShell, you will need to disable the execution policy first, like we did in the previous videos. You can also find the command down in the description. Now, as we started the script, it took like a long time until the GUI is finally shown. This lag was actually caused by those images here that we needed to download first in order to show them here. In WPF, you see the effect when you scroll that the images are loaded on the fly as you scroll. And here you don't see this because all of the images are just preloaded. And loading the images for the first 100 coins one by one takes time. Of course, there are ways to make it faster or even implement some kind of lazy loading, like the WPF grid is doing out of the box. But for simplicity, this is good enough. Now let's try out the GUI. We are on the first page. Let's see about. So we are running as a 64-bit process. And down here you can see the .NET Framework version that is used. All right. Let's try the next page. 
Loading the new page also takes time because of the images and the previous button brings us back to the beginning. Alright, let's close it. Now if you look at again at the script, this large portion here from line 68 all the way down to the line 182 is just used to build the GUI. There is no actual logic or business logic here and it takes up a half of the whole script. So it would make sense to move this part somewhere else. Like for instance to a separate PowerShell script file. And that's what I already did. I have a second file here, Coin Browser Form. It's also a PowerShell script and it contains only the GUI part. So I just copy pasted the GUI part into this separate script here. And now in our main script, we can just use that file. So let's see how this works. Inside the main script, I will just delete all the highlighted GUI part. And here I will execute the commands from this Coin Browser Form script, which is the PowerShell script right here that holds the WinForms GUI part. And so this way, the main script becomes much more readable and it contains only the logic. Now just an explanation what this line here means. This Coin Browser Form script that creates the GUI is located inside the same folder as this main script and we are executing this script in the same context. And that's why we can access all those controls inside this main script here as well. Save it. Let's see if this works. Play. Yes, here it is, no problems, it is working. Now let's see if the hot reloading feature that I mentioned previously also works for WinForms. While the script is running, let's try to edit the form. Let's say I want to change the coin browser title just to browser and I also want to change the text color to orange. Let's save it. All right, back to the GUI. Let's also change the page to make it more interesting. Now if I select the grid, and press F12. The GUI gets reloaded and we get the new text with the new color. Which is awesome, so this means that we can reload the GUI while the script is running. You cannot do this with a WinForms executable by the way, at least not in an easy way, as in PowerShell. And again, this makes PowerShell perfect for prototyping. All right, we can close this one, back to the main script. There is another thing I want to show you. You don't need to load the script from your hard drive, you can also load it from a URL for instance. In that case you would need to write something like this. So here I have another WinForms script on my GitHub. I download the script content and then I execute it in the same scope. Let's see how that works. Play. Alright. Works. Now the only thing I did not show you so far is how to create the WinForms GUI inside Visual Studio. Let's see how that looks like. Here we are inside Visual Studio and as with the WPF example, I also created this empty WinForms project here inside Visual Studio that just contains this one Windows form, which is this one right here. And the only thing that we are really interested in is the code behind the designer file. And down here is the interesting part. As you can see here we have the coin grid, the title, the previous button, the next button and so on. And this part is very similar as the part we have in PowerShell, this one right here. If I move this to the right, it's easy to see that we are doing the same things here as we do in Visual Studio in C Sharp. And this part in Visual Studio gets automatically generated as we move the GUI around here inside the designer file. Because it's easier to change the GUI here. Now in this video I will not explain how to work with the WinForms designer in Visual Studio because this is a whole nother topic. But you can use this one and the designer file in Visual Studio as a very good starting point to write your own PowerShell script. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, if you like content like this, then you can find a lot more free dev related videos on my channel and there is a lot more to come. So please give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. It means a lot to me. It makes the channel grow. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.